Hello, welcome back to STEM Storytime. I'm Taylor and today we will be reading The Three Little Pigs by James Marshall. After that, I have a fun activity that even you guys could try at home. So I went around my house and looked for materials that I had that I could build my own little pig houses out of. So um, I'm gonna test them afterwards to see if they'll stand up against my own uh, huffing and puffing. So let's get started. The Three Little Pigs. There we go. Once upon a time, an old sow sent her three little pigs out into the world to seek their fortune. Now be sure to write, she said, and remember that I love you. The first little pig met a man with a load of straw. I know, said the little pig. I'll buy your straw and build a house. That's not a good idea, said the man. Mind your own business, thank you, said the little pig. And he bought the straw and set about building a house. It took him no time at all. Very soon, a lean and hungry wolf happened by. Pig was just about his favorite food in the world. So he knocked on the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. To which the little pig replied, No, 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 not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. This annoyed the wolf to no end. And he said, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Go right ahead, said the little pig. So the wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew the house in and he gobbled up the little pig. The second little pig met a man with a load of sticks. I've got it, said the little pig. I'll buy those sticks and build a house. Uh, I'd think twice about that, said the man. Oh, poo, said the little pig. What would you know? And he bought the sticks and went to work building a house. Very pretty, he said. No sooner had the little pig settled in his, house, his pretty house than the wolf happened by. He was still hungry and he said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. To which the little pig replied, uh, No, 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 not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. The wolf didn't care for that at all. And he said, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Ha ha ha, said the little pig. So the wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew the house in. And he gobbled up the little pig. Now the third little pig met a man with a load of bricks. These bricks will make a fine, sturdy house, said the man. Capital idea, my good fellow, said the little pig. So he bought the bricks and set about building a house. It took him quite a bit of time, but it was well worth it. Nice and solid, said the little pig, nice and solid. But no sooner had the little pig moved in than he noticed the wolf loitering about. And the wolf, who was still hungry, said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. To which the little pig replied, oh, no, 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 not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Well, the wolf had heard that before. And he said, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Oh, don't do that, said the little pig. But the wolf huffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, and he puffed, until he was quite blue in the face. The house stood firm. I'll try another approach, muttered the wolf. And he put on his most dazzling smile. <laughs> little pig, I was only teasing, he said. By the way, I hear tell that Farmer Jones has the most scrumptious turnips. Shall we go pick a few? Oh, I'm much too busy now, said the little pig. What about tomorrow morning? Excellent, said the wolf. I'll come for you at six. 
The next morning, the little pig got up at five, hurried off to Farmer Jones's turnip field, picked a basketful of scrumptious turnips and dashed back home. When the wolf arrived at six, the turnips were already boiling in the pot. Oh, sorry, I couldn't wait, said the little pig. The wolf tried not to show his displeasure. No harm done, he said. Uh, by the way, there is a lovely apple patch, uh, apple tree. Ah, there is a lovely apple tree down in Merry Meadow. Shall we go help ourselves to a few apples? I must cook my turnips, said the little pig. Let's meet there tomorrow morning. Splendid, said the wolf. Shall we say five? The next morning, the little pig was up at four and went off for the apples. It took longer than he'd expected to reach Merry Meadow. And while busy gathering apples in the highest tree, he saw the wolf approaching. Oh, do try one of these, he called down, throwing an apple as far as he could. When the wolf chased after the apple, the little pig shimmied down the tree and made it safely home. The next day, the wolf came again. Really, he was quite put out. There's a fair today on Hog Hill, he said. Would you care to go? Why don't we meet there, said the little pig. Would three o'clock suit you? Colossal, said the wolf. Three it is. Just make sure he would be there at two. At one in the afternoon, the little pig went to the fair and had a fine time, so fine that he lost track of the hour. Suddenly, out of the corner of his eye, he saw the wolf coming up the hill. Without a minute to spare, the little pig jumped inside an empty butter churn and rolled down the hill toward the dwarf. Or toward the wolf, sorry. Well, the wolf was so scared, he ran all the way home. That evening, the wolf went to the little pig's house and told him how frightened he'd been by a great round thing that came down the hill. Frightened you, did I? said the little pig. That great round thing was a butter churn and I was inside. <laughs> this was simply too much for the wolf to stand. I've been nice long enough, he cried. I'm going to eat you up right now. And he climbed onto the roof. When the little pig saw this, he put a big iron pot in the fireplace and quickly stoked the fire. Here I come, cried the wolf, dinner time. You can say that again, said the little pig. And he cooked the mean old wolf and gobbled him up. The end. So that was one of my favorite stories growing up. I loved hearing that one. And one thing that uh, I used to do with my uh, siblings and my grandma actually was build our own little houses and reenact the story. Um, we used bigger things like making blanket forts, but there are ways we can do that here at home with even smaller things. So I went ahead and found some pieces of just random stuff at home that I thought I could build little houses out of. So first one, I made this little house. This one took me no time at all to make. It's just pieces of foam, packing foam, and uh, some tape, and I made a little foam house. Here's the door. And now I don't have three little pigs with me, but I do have my three dinosaur friends. So these guys will be our stand-ins for the little pigs. So, first, first little piggy, I'm go in the house. Let's see if his house will stand up. When I, the wolf, huff and puff and try to blow his house in, let's see what happens. All right. A little pig, a little pig, let me come in. Not bad hair, my chinny chin chin. So I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll... <sighs> yeah. Yep. 
his house did not uh, withstand. It's very flimsy. Doesn't take much at all to make this house go boom. So, foam was not a very good choice for making a house. It's not very sturdy. So what about this? So these are colorful popsicle sticks and I made a little house. This one took me a little bit longer to make, but not long at all. Just maybe a minute or two. I just stacked the popsicle sticks on top of each other. We're gonna pop our little friend in here, put his little roof on top, and we'll see if his house will stand up to the test. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and a puff and <gasps> no. So uh, obviously my huffing and puffing ain't doing a whole lot to bring this house down. But what if I brought some of my little wolf friends with me and we decided to knock the door down instead? Knock, knock, knock. Uh oh. Knock, knock, knock. And there it goes. So that one was not very sturdy either. That house, all it took was a few little knocks and it came crumbling down. Didn't have a very good foundation. Also, I didn't use glue or anything, so there's that. So my last house, this one took me the longest to build and I think it's gonna be the sturdiest. I don't think any huffing, puffing or tapping is going to bring this one down. Bricks, Lego bricks to be precise. This one took me a little bit of time. These little windows, it's got shutters. Oh, let's see if I can open that. See? So the third little pig, it's gonna go inside his little house. And because the wolf is coming, we're gonna shutter the windows so the wolf can't climb inside. All right, let's give this one a go. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. I'm not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. So I'll huff and puff. <gasps> Nope, not getting anywhere. Nope. That is one sturdy house, if I do say so myself. Uh, so yeah, he's safe in there. This was a much better house than the other ones I made. The other two houses, I didn't use the right materials, did I? I used sticks, but no glue, nothing to hold the sticks together. So they were, I was able to push them over really easily. And this one, this is foam and it breaks very easily. It's also very light. So, you know, a little stiff breeze is gonna make it go bye-bye. So, what kind of things do you think you have in your house that you could make fun houses out of? Um, paper, you could look at paper and I bet there's some really cool origami instructions out there to make a little paper house. Um, I remember growing up, there were things called Lincoln logs. Uh, those were some of my favorites. You could build little log cabins with them. I wonder how well those would stay up. They're a little bit sturdier than my sticks here. Um, there's all kinds of stuff, clay, I wonder what, uh, wonder how that would work. So go ahead and uh, see what you can do at your house. I'll see you later, bye.